Hello, hello, hello! It is Mr. Ranieri, and we have a 3D printing video. In this video, we will learn how to turn a 3D model in Fusion 360, just like this one, into a real part in the real world made out of plastic. And how are we going to do this? Well, of course, we are going to use the magic of 3D printing that prints a layer at a time. We have some pretty cool 3D printers. They are the M200 Plus by a company called Zortrax. They're really nice. They print in beautiful quality, some good quality parts. And we will use a program that's made by Zortrax called Z Suite. So, first step, you will need to go onto Google and look for Z Suite. The first result is one by Zortrax. You click on it, it takes you to the download page, and then you click on, obviously, download. Uh, if you're on Mac, click the Mac download button. I'm on Windows, so I will download the most recent version for Windows. You can type your serial number for the 3D printer. That's found on the back of the 3D printer. It's also in the settings page in the 3D printer or you can type your email address. I'm going to choose to type my email address um, and then they will send you email, the very first one. You scroll right down to the bottom and you hit unsubscribe so that they never send you an email again. Anyway, now we've got Zortrax downloading. That will take three minutes. In that three minutes, I'm gonna go whoop, into Fusion 360 so that we can get the STL file that we need. We've got a full 3D model here, 3D design, but an STL file is uh, good for 3D printing and we need to decide which of these parts we're going to print so we can get that in the STL file. I'm going to choose to print this part first. You can see in my design I've organized it into different components you can click on the eyeball next to a component to show or hide it. So I can just show one component at a time, for example, and you can see it build up. So I want to build this motor base plate. I want to 3D print that. So what you can do is you can right click on it and go save as STL. Just a heads up, you might not have different components and that's okay. You might just have different bodies so you can also click on the little arrow next to bodies, right click on the body that you want. See, this one here, it highlights, that's the one I want, and go save as STL. It will do the same thing. So you can see selection, I don't need to do anything, it is already highlighted. You don't need to send to 3D print utility, so you can uncheck that, and everything else you can just leave the same. Let's click OK. And we're going to save that. As you can see, I've already saved this earlier. Give it a sensible name so you can find it later. I'm calling it motorbaseplate.stl. Save. Yes. STL is the standard format for 3D models that you want to 3D print. Let's see how that download's going. Oh, network error. That's cool. Hmm. Well, that's okay, we can download it again. Wow, look at it go, zooming, zooming along. While this is waiting, if you want to print more parts in the same 3D print, remember it takes, you know, five hours, 10 hours to 3D print something, so you might want to print lots of things at the same time, then you can go through and select another part. In this case, maybe I just want to select this case which looks like if I hide everything else, which looks like this. So if I right click on that particular body and go save as STL, then I can save that part as well. And you can do that for all of the parts that you might need. So there is one file for each of them. Let's see how that download is going. Yay, it did it, it did it. So you can click on that uh, zip file to open it, double click on the EXC, the executable, the application, now, unfortunately, 
The Z Suite program um, is not yet recognized by Windows. They have not tested it. So it is unrecognized. Running this app might put your PC at risk. Fortunately, this company is quite large and reputable. Um, this is the official website for Zortrax. You can tell because it's support.zortrax.com. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, click more info, and then run anyway. Because it is published by Zortrax, a company that I consider at least quite reputable. Uh, you can install for all users or just for you. It doesn't particularly matter. And then you can go through the setup process to install Zortrax. Sorry, Zortrax Z Suite is the name of the program. There we go. Excellent. And these options seem okay. These default options are okay. It's always good to go through the install a little bit slowly when you're installing new software, just to check it's not installing other stuff. Now, it's very tempting, very tempting to press yes here. Visual C++ 2013. But I can tell you that this will probably not work on the school internet. <laughs> so just go no. And if we need that thing, we can install it another way. So if that comes up, asking if you want to install the Visual C++ redistributable, just go no. And finish. How very exciting. It is loading Z Suite, and soon we will be able to 3D print our parts. Now, we have a Zortrax M200 Plus. It will ask you to try the beta. Just say no. Don't get the beta. I don't like it. Anyway, as mentioned before, we have an M200 Plus. So click on Start a New Project in the M200 Plus. You can drag your files in, or you can um, click on Add Files to find them, depending on what is easiest for you. I know I saved them in Downloads, so I'm going to import the Impeller case. And then I'm also going to add a model for the motor base plate. Cool, all right. Uh, while I'm at it, considering I'm printing these things, I'm going to choose to print a few more as well. So if you have other objects to print, you can do the same process to save STL files for anything that you might want to print. Um, oh, that's a cool part. I will print that for sure. There we go. Um, and this one, why not? I'll print everything. Save as STL. All right. Now let's go back in Z Suite and we can add those new models. You can control click. So if you hold control and click, you can select more than one thing. That doesn't just work in this program, that is in many programs. You can hold control and click to select more than one. Now you can hold left click and drag uh, to rotate, or you can hold right click and drag uh, to move around. Uh, unfortunately, if you're on a trackpad, then it's much harder to pan around like this, but at least you can hold left click and rotate. All right, now there's some problems with the way that we're going to print these things, especially this. Um, if you have a look, there's a lot of space underneath this middle bit here. There's a lot of overhang. Overhang in a 3D print is not what you want. So an overhang is, well, this is an overhang in a building, but it's when there's a part of your 3D model that's not supported by anything underneath. So if you are 3D printing overhang, then a 3D printer will often struggle because, there we go, when it's trying to print this top part, there was nothing underneath to support it. So the hot melted plastic just fell and drooped and made a big spaghetti mess. So if you can, it's best to rotate things so that there is no overhang. And if you look at this part, you could easily flip it upside down and then there would be no overhang at all. So click on the part, then click on place by face, and then click on the face that you want to be flat on the ground. I want this top part to be flat on the ground, so I'll click on there. Cool, and now there's no overhang. The same with this part. If I click on it, notice underneath this red section, there's nothing supporting it. 
and also that red section, there's nothing underneath. If I click on place by face, we can drag to move around and put this part flat on the ground. There we go. Now it will print with no issues at all. If you can, it's really good to design your 3D models so that they don't need any overhang. Um, well, they don't have any overhang. This part here, for example, I have designed so that if I put it flat like this, there we go, the bottom is nice and flat on the ground and there is nothing, there is no overhang. There's no unsupported parts. Um, unfortunately, if I click on this one um, and place by face and maybe put that part flat on the ground, no matter how I rotate this part here, it's always going to need support. But if you can avoid it, that's best. Once you're done, there's this auto arrange models button. So you can click on that and it will move them to the center really close together so it's faster to print. Beautiful. And now I've got my parts ready to print. You can then go to print settings and the material, check the material that's on the front of the 3D printer on the display, but normally we use PLA Pro. So change that to be PLA Pro. Um, the settings you can normally leave the default is normally fine. The support, you can choose to disable support. I'm just going to go preview and that will do automatic support for us. Right now it's slicing, which means it's getting these 3D models and converting it into all the movements that the 3D printer needs to do to print them. If we have a look back at that animation, you can see the printer prints it layer by layer, like in slices. That's why it's called slicing. And also the 3D printer needs to know when it needs to push plastic through and how much plastic to put through. So that's what the slicing does for us. That's why it says slicing has been completed. It shows a little animation of how it will 3D print. I'll just show you that again. It'll go one layer at a time. All of this gray stuff that you can see here, that is a support structure. So that is plastic that's designed, well, the way that it prints it is designed so it can snap it off later. And that is what the 3D printer puts in when you do have overhang. So this blue part here had a big hole underneath. So Z Suite, the software, puts all of this plastic underneath in a fairly efficient pattern, as you can see, so it doesn't waste lots of plastic, and you should be able to just tear that off at the end. It's best if you can avoid it, but in this case, we couldn't. All right, and now we have our file ready to 3D print. Uh, if you click on export file, you can see how long it's gonna take, seven hours. It's gonna use 60 grams of filament. Don't worry about that, leave that unchecked. Click on export file, and that will give you a Z codex file. You will need to save that onto a USB stick. Um, uh, you will need to save that on a USB stick. I won't show that now, but find the USB stick and then put it on there. And then save. Put it on the USB stick and save. Once you've done that, you can eject the USB stick, put it in the 3D printer, press the print button and be able to print it. One final reminder, obviously, make sure that you ask your teacher before you print things. Um, to use the 3D printers, you have to get permission from your teacher. All right, have fun 3D printing. See you everyone.